Hello everyone this is part 2 of what if Deku married Jiro, and I hope you guys enjoy this video and to like, to subscribe, to share, and check out the playlist, to see more comment down below, now let's start the, intro. Monday, classes began again and Jiru was a wreck unbecoming of herself. Careless mistakes in answering questions during class, taking notes with a notebook for a different class, spacing out, the list went on. Jiro, is something the matter with you today? Yaoyorazu asked during lunch. What do you mean? I'm doing fine. I'm not sick or anything. That isn't what I mean, and you know it. Clearly there is something weighing heavily on your mind to the point that it compromises your performance. Did something happen? Oh, she had no idea. While Jiru was relieved that Ashido had kept her mouth shut about the incident, she knew that she was in need of a second and even a third opinion just to ease her mind. But who could she talk to about this that would take this calmly and with discretion? Yaoyorazu, possibly, considering her professionalism but it was highly likely that she hadn't any dating experience or much interaction with Izuku. Asui was another viable option due to her brutal honesty on par with hers, and knows Izuku better than her. Yuraraka was most certainly out of the question for obvious reasons, and she wouldn't dare seek out Ashido if her life depended on it. It would probably end up in her assaulting the pink girl with her earphone jacks on pure principle. Maybe one of the guys. Kirishima bound by the morals of manliness, perhaps. Or Todoroki. Or the taciturn Kuda, even. Jiru. You're spacing out again. Ha. Huh. Oh. Right. Sorry. It's a. Uh, kinda complicated. In more ways than one. I'll figure it out. Being out of tune like this is so. Aggravating. We all have our off days. Don't try to beat yourself up about it. Asui said. Giving her a reassuring pat on the shoulder. Ashido opened her mouth to interject but soon covered it upon meeting Jiru's death glare. So. Yuraraka. We've got combat training after math class this afternoon. You excited? Hagakur asked after swallowing a bite of her ramen. Ah, I guess. It is what I've been training in extensively along with my quirk. Dot but I'm probably gonna have to wear gloves. Right. But it's a shame we can't wear our costumes for it though. Hagakur sighed. Of course it'd be a shame for you, Hagakur. All you gotta do is lose the boots and gloves and nobody'd see you coming. Mina giggled. Wah hey. It's an advantage that I can usually exploit, okay. And it's a good one. Besides, you're one to talk, Mina. Nobody could touch you without burning themselves with your quirk. Jiru couldn't help but snicker a little at that. Plus she could just imagine some of the guys being absolutely flustered, maybe not Todoroki, at least on the outside, grappling with a girl in her birthday suit. Even if she was invisible. What about you, Jiru? You excited too? Test out how you are at hand to hand. Ha. Huh. Oh. Right. Yeah. Here's hoping it'll amount to something. It hadn't even been a week, but perhaps being smacked around in a ring and field testing what she learned would do her some good, forcing herself in tune. As Jiru suspected, the combat training exercise without quirks took place in training room theater, with Aizawa proctoring the class. There are going to be circumstances, particularly for emitter and transformation type quirk holders, where using your quirk would be ill-advised or will just simply be unavailable. As such, you all need to be able to handle yourself without them should you be required to do so. Proficiently. Remember, heroes cannot be one-trick ponies. Pressing a button on the wall, a holographic screen appeared in front of the students, with student pairings assigned. Whoa, wait, Mr. Aizawa. We're, we're sparring each other, without using our quirks. The diminutive Mineta asked with a raised hand. He had a crazy, drooling smile on his face with a glaze over his eyes. Precisely. And if you purposely cause a wardrobe malfunction, you'll be hanging from the flagpole in your boxes until all classes end. Anyways, although you'll have to fight tooth and nail to survive in actual combat, this is a training exercise, so here are some rules. No quirks unless it's a mutant type. No eye gouging, biting, groin attacks or breaking bones. He gave a quick glance at Izuku. Anything else is fair game. Five minutes per round, and you randomly switch partners in 30 seconds until I say. Any questions? Could we, uh, perhaps get a demonstration, sir? Izuku piped up with a timid hand raised. Izawa, 
who had just pulled out his yellow sleeping bag, sighed slightly but nodded. Unclipping his utility belt and pulling his capturing weapon off his neck along with his signature goggles, he stepped into a circle with his hands raised. You brought it up, Midoriya. You own up to it. Wami, get in here. His eyes flashed red. Yes, sir. Izuku hurriedly stepped into the circle as well, fists raised and shifting his weight on the balls of his feet rhythmically. Taking two breaths, he moved forward, lunging out with a one-two followed with another two jabs. Izawa simply swatted them out of the way with his palm and stepped in, heel of the palm aiming for Izuku's chin. Ducking down, he dished out another couple of body shots which were blocked with one arm parrying him, the last one smacking his arm away from his torso, leaving his right side completely defenseless. Now a fist came hurtling towards Izuku's head, but he wasn't done yet. Leaning downwards, he brought the hand that was swatted away down to the mat. Bringing his legs up, knees bent and pressed together, he pushed off with that arm with all his might, launched a double kick aimed for Izawa's chest, whose eyes widened and lips curved slightly. Still too slow. Oh crap. Izuku felt Izawa's arms wrapping around his, swinging him in a circle once before being tossed at his classmate's feet like a pile of laundry. Oomph. OWW. I see you took a page out of Broken Sword's style. Adapting and improvising works only with experience. Show's over now, all of you get a move on. And boys, do not pull any punches just because you get paired up with a female classmate. I'll know if you do. Yes sir. Everyone scattered with their respective partners as they began. Damn, I really thought that was gonna work. I mixed in Asui's frog-like two-legged kick with Ashido's breakdance one-hand stand, but he saw through that like glass. I should have recovered and changed my approach, he was taking it easy on me so it definitely was an option, but Mr. Iza was the super pragmatist, so would he have let me? Scratching his head, he went on ranting and muttering to himself again as he looked up at the roster to see who he was paired up with. Mashiro Ojiro. Guess we're up first round. You all right? Yeah. I was hoping that would at least graze him. This is Mr. Izawa we're talking about. He'd probably wipe the floor with us without weapons even if everyone in class rushed him. Fair enough. You ready? Yup. Being a practitioner of combat functional karate from a young age and an extra appendage for further application, Izuku was not so keen on facing Ojiro head on. Shifting his weight from one ball of the foot to the other, he advanced with a jab which was met with a circular sweep away from the body, redirecting the trajectory. Switching to a southpaw feet position, he threw another jab with his right. Ojiro sidestepped, lashing out with a push kick which Izuku met with left straight that connected with the sole of his foot, pushing him back. Without missing a beat, Izuku grabbed his foot and launched a counterattack, low kicks of his own at the only leg Ojiro had on the ground, once, twice, thrice against his thigh. He rained down elbows on the leg he caught until Ojiro unleashed a roundhouse in midair, forcing him to let go. Deepening the frown at the pain his leg was in, Ojiro now took the initiative, returning kicks of his own which Izuku dodged and blocked but they were fast. Alarmingly so. Another one came, at middle height which Izuku prepared for with a three-point block, palm, forearm and shoulder, only for the blow to knock Izuku in the side of the head. Although it was a moderate graze than a direct hit, it was enough to discombobulate for a short while which was not left unnoticed. With a twist to the right, Ojiro came at him with a left hook. But rather than dodging or blocking, Izuku met it with his forehead, essentially headbutting Ojiro's fist before his arm was extended. Grabbing that arm, he pulled hard as he stepped in on the outside of it, the right elbow swiping across his jaw, followed up with a spinning elbow strike to the back of his head. Gotcha. He whispered to himself, jumping through the air with legs bent. Not yet. Apparently having heard Izuku, Ojiro rolled backwards as the knee strike intended for him struck nothing but air, exposing his entire back as well. Ojiro leaped forward in an effort to tackle his opponent, only to be met with the soles of Izuku's sneakers. His two feet made solid contact with the tailed boy's chest, blasting him off balance just as the buzzer went off, signaling the end of five minutes. Standing up, Izuku offered a hand to Ojiro, who accepted it graciously. Nice, you got me. I was just desperate and I didn't think that kick would work. Could you show me that last kick you did again by any chance? It was amazing. Um, sure, yeah. Some other time. At your convenience would be great, thanks. Let's see now, who's next. Oh, oh, boy, this isn't going to end well. 
The roster showed Satu's name next to his. He felt like he was about to go wrestle a bear. Oof. Good luck. I'm. Oh crap. I'm probably screwed as well. I'm up against Bakugo. Any tips you can give as his childhood friend? Hit and run. Don't try to co him if you know you can't. Good luck. All right. Good luck with yours. With a firm handshake, Ojiro left in search of the perpetually irate human grenade. Damn, Yamomo, you're a beast at this. Jiru groaned, tasting iron in her mouth as she stood up. Yaoyorazu was more or less untouchable. Every plan, every attempt at a feint, and most attacks were easily blocked or countered, leaving her with a string of soon-to-be bruises and welts. Not surprising, considering she was sparring with the girl that taught her much of what she knows about practical hand-to-hand -hand combat. I have been given proper instruction in self-defense since I could walk properly, but you're no pushover yourself, Jiru. I can still feel those punches to the stomach. Pray tell, where did you pick that up? It resembled Muay Thai, if memory serves. Oh, ah, uh, I've been getting some advice on hand-to-hand -hand actually, and since we have this class, I figured it would be good for a test run. Well, it seems to be working fairly well, though you did seem to be compromising form a little at the end. It's a work in progress, but thanks for the tip. Who's next for you? Let's see here. Kaminari, apparently. Ah, you'd kick his ass to the wind, don't worry. I have, shit, it's Kuda. I honestly don't want to fight him. Ojiro's up against Bakugo. Would you like to switch with him? Yaoyorazu giggled jokingly. Well, guess I'm punching Kuda then. I'll get him some cabbage and carrots for his bunny later. This honestly wasn't going to be fun, but it couldn't be as bad as having to spar with Mineta like Kuraka was or going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Shuji like Asui has to. Besides, Kuda was a genuinely nice guy. Not as talkative, but very compassionate. Much like Midoriya. As soon as that name came to mind, Jiru shook her head and slapped her own cheeks. Bad Kyoka. Focus, dumbass. Round 6 was when Aizawa finally notified everyone that this will be the last round before a short break and moving on to the next part of the class. A tired but genuine hooray was heard from Mineta who had constantly received the short end of the stick, fighting Uraraka, Satu, Todoroki, and Shuji so far, losing every round. Now he had to square off against Bakugo when he was pretty much limping with a black eye and a bloody nose. Jiru had won three rounds, and the roster made her grit her teeth and shut her eyes tight. Either Aizawa had control of the roster with the remote or the universe was just being a plain old dick, because she was fighting against the one person she didn't want to, Izuku Midoriya. Guess we're doing this, huh? Yeah, sorry. The green-haired boy felt the same way as well, with three winning rounds for the day under his belt. Kinda hoping that this wouldn't happen. Not your fault. Promise me you won't hold back. Okay. H how about R, I buy you something from a vending machine if you win. Oh. You're going to regret your positive reinforcement, Midoriya. Jiru grinned, her fists tightening slightly. She charged in, rushing in with a flurry of punches. Think I already am. Izuku danced around them, moving out of her range while parrying some that were a little too close for comfort. He had to smile in satisfaction though, considering what he taught her in so little time was sticking. Although Jiru was on the offensive, the previous five more or less consecutive battles had taken a considerable amount of stamina out of her as she felt the familiar dull pain in her neck and shoulders with every punch. Even her low kicks were being blocked with ease, damaging her still unhardened shins in the process. In fact, the more time elapsed, the more her attacks consistently hit air. Izuku continued to wear her out, matching her attack with counters and disrupting her rhythm before backing out of her reach. Damn it. She yelled in frustration, yet another wild swing failing to connect with solid flesh. That was when she realized her mistake. Izuku charged forward with his head down, landing a 1-2, a left hook and a rear leg push kick that blasted Jiro off her feet onto her back. She could sit up, but her legs wobbled and gave out in her attempts at getting back into the fight. The last dozens of seconds on the clock ran out as the buzzer sounded off. Sorry. You okay, Jiro? Die did I. Did I kick you too hard? Can you breathe? Is your shin all right? Relax, I'm fine. But still. And why are you apologizing? You're supposed to hit me, idiot. She knocked him in the shin with a tired arm. That's what this class is for. Help me up, though. Yeah, yeah, SS sure. Here. Holding out his hand, he helped Jiru up to her feet, 
with the other hand poised at shoulder height to catch her in case her legs buckled. Even after standing up, their hands and eyes lingered over each other's bodies glistening with sweat for another 12 seconds seconds, a new wave of heat rising in their faces that were three fists away from each other. Even if it was just gym clothes, Jiru looked amazing. The redness complemented her porcelain skin well, making her look sexy. That was the only word Izuku could come up to describe her right now. He hated that his vocabulary couldn't be more refined than the top five words that come out of Mineta's mouth, but there was no other way. Izawa calling them all snapped both of them back to reality as they broke eye and physical contact with each other. Beside Izawa was Snipe, the gunslinger pro hero who possessed a homing quirk, making him by default one of the best marksmen in the country. From what I can see, some of you are doing fairly well. Others are a hair above mediocre at best. And all of you still have long ways to go in terms of perfecting technique. Anyways, now that you've got a glimpse at your advantages and disadvantages as well as your arsenal and its applications depending on your opponent, we'll move on to fighting with weapons. Weapons, sir. Ida asked Aizawa with his hand raised high above his head. I thought that unless pro heroes go through specific courses, examinations and background checks, they are not authorized to carry any kind of weapon or support item even if their quirk required its use. Correct. Again, Ida, it's another means to an end. Some of you saw me using caltrops during the finals. Just so you know, that's not all I use when I'm on duty. The more means, the better off you'll be in the long run. Using a weapon is the best way to know it and therefore counter it, hence these kinds of classes. And statistically speaking, Snipe added, villains rarely fight fair, quirk or not. So expecting a hidden weapon like a concealed carry pistol will always help. Makes sense. Yes sir. Excuse my impertinence. Midoriya, you're up again. Aizawa motioned. He pointed to a box of bright colored mock weapons and wooden sticks the size of his forearm. Take the gun and jam it in Snipe's face. No quirks. Ah. Oh okay. Izuku tentatively picked up a bright blue mock pistol and held it up at Snipe's face height, directly at the gas mask he donned. Just as he stepped close enough for the gun to be within arm's reach, his vision spun as the gun was out of his hand and he was on his back again, throbbing slightly. The gun-toting cowboy's movements were too fast to discern what he did. Ashido, grab the stick. Quick counter, disarm and take down. Kirishima, take the knife. Trap arm, disarm, flip, and arm lock. Snipe's movements were that of a well-oiled machine, making it clear he had done this over thousands of times for a course of years against opponents with real weapons. Wooer, that was sick. Kaminari whispered under his breath. I just showed you one example of disarming and takedowns for each weapon, but there are many other variations. I almost got myself killed barely two years after my debut as a pro when I ran out of ammo, but mundane techniques like these is what saved my life. Just so you know, a razor head is better than me at this, given his quirk. He chuckled. This is how you survive yielding maximum results with minimal effort. Pair up, grab one of each and do some disarming drills. We'll give you hints along the way. As always, everyone was exhausted once classes were over, dragging their habitually sore bodies back to the dormitories. Jiro was one of them as well, who was forced to admit that she needed far, far more stamina in order to contend with opponents with quirks that enhance physical capabilities. She'd have to discuss bulk up on calisthenics, running, the works. With Midoriya, then she remembered her heart throb rather quickly when he helped her up. Holding hands, staring into each other's eyes. All they needed was a beach and a sunset and it would be the textbook motherfucking definition of a rom-com climax scene. It was so fucking cliche that the word, embarrassing, doesn't even begin to describe the amount of anger and self-loathing that was bubbling in her chest at the moment. What the hell is wrong with me? Get a grip, bitch. Ugh. Tell him the truth, her mother said. But how? She wasn't exactly an eloquent speaker like present Mike or the headmaster Nedzu, for that matter. Besides, it wasn't her place to get in his way to becoming a hero. So how could she possibly think of a delicate way to put how she feels about him without making Midoriya potentially suffer a heart attack from having this sprung on him? Or worse, shutting himself away from her. Jiru. Hello. A webbed hand waved in front of her eyes. Ha. Huh. Oh. Right. Sorry. Um. What were we talking about again? The whole disarming seminar and everyone's comments. Ribbit. Oh. Right. Yeah. Sorry. 
It was ah, uh, informative, and it's definitely going to come in handy if, you know, you get mugged or something. Using our quirks still is illegal, after all. No, I get, that. Ashido grumbled, stretching out her shoulders after a merciless beatdown that Todoroki dished out. But who in this day and age would use guns and knives when there are support items? And quirks. You all remember I talked a little about my intern with Selkie, right? Yeah, stowaways and stolen cargo along with drugs, right? That was more action than any of the classmates of 1A got, aside from the hero killer incident. That wasn't all, actually. There was a small crate of firearms. You didn't hear that from me though. But what I'm trying to say is, quirks don't make you immune to bullets. At least not all of them. Not completely. Plus we do have the Yakuza to consider. Yaoyorazu added quietly. The eight precepts of death may be no more, but they aren't the only criminal organization that isn't the League of Villains that would arm themselves with more than just quirks. I trust it most certainly will come in handy at some point. Let's hope we won't have two. Guns are scary, even though I did disarming drills with Gunhead. Uraraka said with a worried look. Oh, stop worrying so much, Uraraka. Ashido's hand gave her shoulder a reassuring squeeze. You'll be fine when push comes to shove. Speaking of which, Jiru, I never knew you could fight with a stick like that. Where'd you learn it? Yes, I do remember you asking me to make a sword at USJ. While I am more partial to a weapon with a longer reach myself, I must admit I was impressed at how you handled yourself. Oh, that, I just, I have good hand-eye coordination, I guess. Plus I do drums, so, bashing things in with style comes naturally, maybe. Perhaps you could give us some pointers some time. Sounds good to me, but just know that it'll be a half-blind novice leading more half-blind novices. We all have to start somewhere, Jiru. I guess. Jiru suddenly stopped. What's the matter? Yaoyorazu asked. An epiphany had just come about. Two. In fact, one was a possible plan of action to tell the truth, the other was the chorus for her lyrics. Sorry, I just, I remembered something important that I have to write down right fucking now, but the notepad for it is in my room and I need to get to it. Catch you back at the dorm. She'd already crossed the line with that kiss. She might as well step across it entirely before she lost her nerve and also finished that damn ballad. After all, Jiru Loki hated losing. It was done. It took another two late nights to finish, but it was done. A title, third verse, chorus, and two ending lines before the full stop. The lyricist's block was no more. Oh my god, my brain is gonna fucking melt. Who? She needed a break. Her brain was begging for something sweet. Heading downstairs, she opened the communal fridge and pulled out a bar of chocolate that was 90% dark. One square always sent her hurtling into absolute bliss for 15 minutes, effectively recharging her motivation to finish whatever task was at hand. There it was, exactly where she left it, always labeled like everyone else's stuff. However, what she didn't count on being there was Izuku himself, who was lounging on the couch, watching a TV series on Netflix, courtesy of Yaomomo, while Todoroki volunteered to pick up the tab for Hulu and Crunchyroll, with a box of cookies on his lap. He looked positively throttled, eyes dead as a fish on land. Ah, Midoriya, hm, ah, a are you, okay? Jiru asked cautiously. Just, can't really think about anything right now. So you're eating this box of cookies on your own while listening to music with one ear and watching ah, uh, oh cool, it's Daredevil. When this season come out? About a month and a half ago, Izuku droned, pulling another cookie out and scarfing it down. I'm halfway through. What's up with you? He asked after swallowing. Jiru couldn't help but snicker a little seeing the hero and quirk nerd act in such an unbecoming state. Grabbing some chocolate. It's great for headaches and stuff. Um, hey, if it's not too much trouble, I, why you remember the no quirk exercises we've been doing, right? Yeah, you were really good. I saw you every now and then out of the corner of my eye. And you had a field day beating Sero, Kaminari and Mineta with the stick. Oh, yeah, that was fun. Wait, no, you're sidetracking me. I was wondering if, you know, we could work on that a little more, alongside with R, uh, what you're helping me with. Sure, I mean, if, if you're up for it. I definitely need improvement on reaction time anyways. All right, great. Jiru said with a smile, a little louder than she intended. 
When's good for you? Starting Thursday would work best for me. All right, Thursday. See you then. Thanks a lot. But just as she was about to leave, she felt a hand grab hers, stopping her. Um. I. Sorry. I'm. I lied to you. What? About. Being okay. I just. I. I lied about that, and I wanted to say that I was sorry before. Anyway, yeah. Did you? Did you have another nightmare? Jiru asked, turning around to face him. I just dozed off. Who was it this time? Stain. Muscular. That all for one guy. Shush Shigaraki. It was arguably the worst possible answer that Izuku could give. Another thing that I never really told anyone was an incident at Kiyashi Ward when we all went shopping. What the fuck? He was, he was there. Back then. All on his own. At least he appeared to be. As the saying goes, he caught me with my pants down. He kept a hand around my neck, one finger away from turning me into dust like he almost did to Mr. Izawa at USJ. I didn't do anything then, because I wasn't sure if he brought back up. But in my dream, I try to stop him. Grab him by that finger, twisting him to the ground, applying everything I learned. But he gets away, turning my leg to dust. Then he goes on a killing spree with half a dozen numis, targeting bystanders, and then Uraraka, all while I watched. Aside from letting Kakin slip through my fingers while we were under the pussycat's supervision, it's one of the worst memories I have that I can't put past myself. Part of the reason why I watch shows with heroes in them is, it's comforting. Knowing that in the end, the good guys win all the time, no matter what. False sense of comfort and escapism, I know, but it's something. Jiru stared at him dumbstruck. She failed to realize until now the extent of damage and suffering this boy's heart truly has sustained, how much every iota of his mind was taxed constantly, going so far as to even using his fear and pain as fuel to further himself. And for the past few days, she may have only exacerbated the burden. I, I, I owe you an apology as well. I shouldn't have, asked you. For your help. I if, if I knew, how much you had to deal with, I nev never would. Her voice was breaking. Her vision was blurry, compelling her to turn around and walk away, covering her mouth. I'm sorry that. No, don't. Izuku reached for her hand again, grabbing it firmly this time. Please, don't go. Jiru, you, dot you gave me a reason to forget those things. Move past it, the unchangeable past. You made it so much easier. I should be thanking you. You're the one that saved me. So thank you, dot for being my hero in my time of need. Jiru just stared up at the boy that was taller than her by about four inches with tear-drenched eyes which Izuku tried to dab at with a handkerchief, but she grabbed that arm and pulled him into a hug, burying her face in his chest. She couldn't deny it anymore, not after this. She absolutely loved him now. Fuck pride, fuck embarrassment and fuck the rom-com-esque corniness. She was in love. She had hopelessly fallen in crazy, stupid love, it felt fucking amazing and she was going to make it even better. Hopefully. Staying like that for another 30 seconds, they stepped away from each other, slowly. Okay, now it's my turn. I also have a, confession to make. Um, okay. What's this about? About me. And it involves you. I was planning on doing this Thursday after disarm practice, but now is a good time as any, I guess. Jiru took a deep breath before continuing. My lyricist's block is completely gone now and I finished the song. Really? That's great. Shut up and let me finish. Anyways, I, dot owe it all to you. We've only known each other officially for, dot not really even a week I think but spending time with you helped me discover new things about myself too. You pushed me up to new heights and strengths that I never even knew I had. So, well, that makes you, am my hero, as well, I guess. In a manner of speaking, a strange silence fell between them, which was lingering for an uncomfortably long time. Izuku's mind was racing furiously, rivaling Ida's recipro burst as he tried to analyze and explicate what it was this confession Jiru just made to him may mean. Was it a mark of gratitude? Most certainly. Could it possibly be something more than just that? She did call him her hero after all. Plus there was that kiss. That should have meant something. You um, you're, you're welcome. But without further evidence, there was no clear answer Izuku could stick to comfortably that would allow him to act on it. Jiru couldn't help but sigh at that. She had hoped that beating around the bush would work, but his skull was thicker than anticipated. 
With another deep breath, she continued, Izuku Midoriya, you're hopelessly dense, you're a fanatical All Might fanboy and a hero, quirk nerd and I love you. Grabbing his shirt and yanking his head down to meet Itarai, she kissed him as her other hand traced its way up through his hair, pulling him in closer. The indescribable heat and softness as well as the taste of chocolate dominating his lips discombobulated Izuku, making his hands drop to his sides, mind blank as a brand new notebook. Um, ah, his brain was still short-circuiting as he continued to stare back at her, trying to organize and re-clarify what had just transpired. The girl he had developed a crush for had just professed her love to him and kissed him straight on the lips and is continuing to stare up at him with an adorable frown. Well, say something jackass, that was my first kiss. She was getting antsy, the deafening sound of both of their hearts drumming in unison echoing in her ears along with the rushing sound of blood. Izuku was conscious, but there was another force taking over him, moving his body like it had another mind of its own. One hand caressed the side of Jiru's face while the other snaked around her tiny waist, pulling her towards him as he caught her lips with his. HMMPH. She let out a muffled squeak, surprised at the sudden initiative taking but soon melted into it, wrapping her arms around Izuku's neck. Jiru felt the heat spreading throughout her body as his fingertips gently traced her spine through the thin fabric of her shirt, making her hum in pleasure. She began doing the same, running her fingers through her hair, massaging his scalp with her fingertips. As Jiru tightened her grip, she felt a hand at the back of her head, deepening the kiss further than the first one. Their tongues gently slid into each other's mouths, poking, probing the roof of the mouth, running across the gum line, along the inside of the cheek. As they quickly began getting the hang of it much like everything else they have been doing thus far, it quickly turned into a competition of who could make the other run out of breath and pull back first. Fireworks were going off through her brain every second, the sound of their heartbeats now a deafening roar, making her want more. Feeling this through the shallow, rapid breathing from her nose, Izuku then proceeded to lift Jiru up off her feet while still maintaining the kiss. This was met with Jiru wrapping her legs tightly around his waist and cupping his face in her hands. Her lips and teeth gently nipped at his lips and tongue as it twirled about. Wobbling slightly, Izuku's foot stepped on the empty cookie box, causing him to slip, sending them both careening into the couch, which finally jolted them out of their heat. They both stared at each other in disbelief, their shoulders heaving, and Jiru staring down at Izuku as she was straddling him. Um, dot wow. Yeah, dot wow. Jiru, why you sure that was your first time? Yeah, why, you, well, ah, uh, you seemed to know exactly what to do, so. S so did you. Jiru had no frame of reference when it came to what constituted good kissing or other techniques of physical intimacy, but Izuku was doing everything right, which was far too paradoxical considering his personality and display of a rather high level of social ineptitude. You picked me up and had your hands dangerously close to my ass. In fact, I'm pretty sure one of them was. And your freaking tongue. What the hell were you thinking? You were nibbling on my lips and tongue. Oh, stop pretending like you didn't like it. I did, and if your legs crushing my ribcage was any indication, you did as well. Immensely. Jiro eventually climbed off Izuku and they each took another minute or so to collect their rational thoughts and regain composure. Sorry about that. I, I'm, it's, just, I'm not lying, okay. I don't want to come off as sleazy. I know, I know. I, ah, uh, I got CC carried away as well, being caught up in the moment and all, so. I'm sorry. And, I love you too, Jiru. Izuku couldn't believe how smoothly those four words came out himself. Without a stammer or averting his gaze, no less. Pushing him down onto his back, Jiru straddled him again, pinning his arms at the side of his head. One kiss after another fluttered on Izuku's lips before being pulled upright by his shirt. Kyoka. Sorry, what? My name is Kyoka, Izuku, and you will address me as such, at least whenever we're alone. I'm your girlfriend now, so no being standoffish or formal. Not with me. Got it. If you dare call me Jiru, I will make you wish you were born blind, deaf and dumb. Um. Yes. K Kyoka. Good. Now shut up and kiss me more, dummy. With his fingertips gently rubbing along her lower back, Izuku kept planting many attentive, soft kisses along her clavicle and neck, eliciting a string of aroused sighs, grunts and moans of varying tones from Jiru while she retaliated by running her tongue along the ridge of his ears, making him growl slightly, 
tighten his grip on her and intensify the kisses. Wait, why no, not the air, hmmf, dot r, oh yeah, oh my god, more hrnngh. Oh, god, yes. She felt her hips moving on their own, grinding against him uncontrollably, her muffled yelps and squeals becoming not so muffled from time to time until she felt her entire lower half of her body convulse violently as a jolt of pleasure struck her from head to toe as Izuku's lips left a rather large hickey behind her ear. However, in the heat of melting into each other, they failed to notice the elevator ding before opening, leading to Tokiyami and Kuda walking right into the middle of the action. The former was there to refill empty bottles with water to keep in his room while the latter came to grab a healthy snack of carrot sticks. But as soon as the elevator doors opened and saw what was happening, Tokiyami rapidly pressed the button to close the elevator without a second thought. For better or for worse, neither Izuku nor Jiru noticed them. Kuda, I know this goes without saying, but, dot not a word. To anyone. We saw nothing, we heard nothing, and therefore we know nothing because we will speak nothing. Understood. Kuda nodded furiously with a red face. Or, oh, come on man. Dark shadow, no. Ah, dark shadow, yes. Dark shadow, I will study in Aoyama's room for the next week and cut your supply of darkness if it's the last thing I do. Midoriya is a valued friend of mine, one that I place much confidence in than anyone I have known. I owe him my loyalty, including silence, and I will not have you jeopardize that. Especially with this. Fiend. Though thoroughly disappointed, the sentient shadow beast complied. Tokiyami himself couldn't help but smile and silently congratulate his friend's fortune for finding someone that loves him. God knows he needed it, more than anyone he knew. Their liaison was escalating rapidly, with Izuku having his shirt pulled completely off and tossed to the side. Jiro was guiding his right hand underneath her midriff-bearing shirt while she placed his left hand firmly on her ass. Rational thought, propriety, dignity and sense of shame was utterly gone from their minds. All they wanted was pure, undiluted pleasure from each other, the steadily increasing number of hickeys and bite marks serving as nothing short of napalm being tossed into the already high flames. Both of their bodies were glowing with pleasure and glistening with sweat. Unable to resist, Izuku pulled Jiru's shirt off, revealing a checker-patterned bra which she quickly slipped off and tossed over her shoulder. Now completely topless, she drew his head to her chest. Realizing what she wanted almost instantly, he tentatively began licking and suckling on her rosy pink buds as he gently fondled her breasts. Izuku was drunk with ecstasy as he partook in everything that was her, touch, smell, taste, sound, everything. He wanted her, all of her, to himself. Ah. Ha, huh? okay, okay, Izuku, I I think, hung, we should. Hum, being tapped on the head repeatedly, he looked up at her, popping her nipple out of his mouth after one last lingering suck. I think we should, um, call it a night, don't you think? She asked through gasps, looking down at her very first, very own boyfriend. Oh, yeah, yeah, I guess you're right, we're in a common space area. Holy shit, my head's still spinning. But that felt amazing. Same. I didn't think that, you know what, words haven't even been invented yet to describe what that was. I just know there was pleasure and there was lots of it. Giggling, Jiro lay on top of Izuku, her head resting on his chest, earphone jacks drawing circles on him. He stroked her hair along with the ridge of her ear. Hey, um, if, if it's not too much to ask, dot can you, ah. Uh, would you mind coming to my room? WWW wait, 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 wait. What? The lingering confidence from the adrenaline vanished like a lit candle in a storm, turning Izuku's face a violently deep shade of red. I said can you, Jiru stopped herself, realizing what she just inadvertently implied, her face and even her earphone jacks now on par in redness with Izuku. I I I, I mean, I ah, uh, I certainly don't mind but you know, everyone's still, awake and stuff, but we are a, uh, a C couple, um, only as of 30 or so minutes ago. Why no, no, that's not what I, I would, I definitely wouldn't say no if you, dot but it's, I mean, it's, I'm not inviting you over for what you think, not today, it's something different, god, I totally walked into that one, stupid, oh, oh, okay, 
Great. Right. Of course. They both laughed nervously before letting out a sigh of relief that they quickly got that grave misunderstanding out of the way. Once they collected their clothing, they walked in silence to the elevator holding hands with their fingers intertwined, bashfully avoiding eye contact but sporting euphoric, crazy smirks on their faces. Making sure nobody was in the hall or close to opening the door to spot them with her quirk, Jiru slowly lead Izuku to her room, her heart beating against her chest to an almost painful degree, but doing so bringing forth an undeniably sweet joy. Being the only ones in the elevator, she wasted no time in jumping her boyfriend and planting another long, wet kiss on his lips before getting off on the third floor. Her room decor, as almost everyone in Class 1A had seen, had a rock and roll theme. The floor was covered with a black and white checker pattern carpet and the ceiling a red and black checker pattern. The wall on the left was lined with shelves of music ranging from CDs, cassettes and even phonograph records. Posters of her favorite bands were placed here and there, including one that covers the entire wall on the right with only two words written in white on black, Deep Dope. All of this was complemented with an assortment of instruments, a synthesizer, a drum set, and three guitars with amps. Yes sir, what are we doing here, Jikyoka? First and foremost, sit down. Um, alright, Izuku carefully placed himself on the edge of her bed adorned with red sheets and a blanket made of a towel-like fabric spread on top of it. His eyes wavered to every corner of the room as if he were expecting a trap to spring on him at any moment. Jiru sat across from him, bass guitar in hand, jaw set and a defiant look in her face. That song I told you I was working on is done, and I want you to be the first to hear it. It is about you, after all. It was getting late, but she wasn't about to stop. Plugging the guitar into a small amp and bringing the volume down as much as possible, she then plugged her smartphone into it which had the instrumental saved. Hitting play, she began. Here goes nothing. Why? Oh why do you hide them, why? Those scars and bruises both new and old. Covering your body, shattering your heart. Some healing, some old, but don't mean the gone. I can tell, I just know it, they sting and ache all the same. It's okay, you say. With that smile and that laugh. It's genuine, I know, but with fishes and cracks. Chipping here, now there. See, abrasions everywhere. Jagged tears just spread further like a spider web. But you press on and on. Always forward, you say. I wanna stop the clock that's counting down. Before you tear yourself to rags. I see you stagger and wobble with every step you take. As you break into the dark. Who will shield you from more of those scars and tears? I want to bring your smile once more to life. Give me the truth, dear hero. Say, I'm crying inside. Say, I'm crying inside. When oh, when will you stop? When? Trapping all your fear, doubt and pain in your head. They're eating you up from the inside out. And you're bursting at the seams. The times you're safe and sound is only in my dreams. It's okay, you say. With that smile and that laugh. But oh no, you don't know it's a shattered one at that. All I see is a hero, hanging by a thread. But a hero also needs his time to take his rest. Yet you press on and on. Always forward, you say. I wanna stop the clock that's counting down. Before you tear yourself to rags. I see you stagger and hobble every step you take. As you break into the dark. Who will shield you from more of those scars and tears? I want to bring your smile once more to life. Give me the truth, dear hero, say, I'm crying inside. Say, I'm crying inside. All I can do is sing, sing for you. Praying that you and your smile will stand. Always strong and true. I'm learning all the ways that'll make you lean on me. Like sewing up your wounds. Cause I'm afraid that you're not afraid. To give your life for another. You say all life in this world is precious. Except, it seems, for your own and I'm worried sick. And I hate that you are doing this to me. I want to stop the clock that's counting down. Before you tear yourself to rags. I see you stagger and hobble every step you take. As you break into the dark. Who will shield you from more of those scars and tears? I want to bring your smile once more to life. Give me the truth. Say, I'm crying inside. Say, I'm crying inside. When you do, I'm gonna save you. I swear I'm gonna save you, just in time. Having sung to her heart's content, Jiru unplugged the bass and set it down, staring at Izuku with an expectant look. Then she noticed tears streaming down his face. I Izuku. Hmm. Oh. Sorry. 
It's, this is the first time that a song's ever made me cry, so, it was. That was beautiful. What's it called? Setting the guitar down, Jiro tackled him with a hug, rolling onto the bed with him. Izuku let out a yelp of surprise but managed to catch her as she rolled on top. Saving my hero. I may have fallen out of favor with the muses, but I don't really need them because I have you now. My very own green, nerdy, super-powered muse. Izuku couldn't help but laugh softly at that corny line. That was something that probably Kaminari would say if he ever went on a date. Kyoka, I love you. She kissed him on his forehead in response. Say it again. Izuku smiled softly. I love you. Another kiss, this time on the brow line. Again. I love you. Eyelid. Again. I love you. Tip of the nose. Again. I love you. Both cheeks. Again. I love you. Left ear. Longer this time. Again. I love you. Neck. Even longer. She left a hickey. One more time. I love you. Lips. Izuku sat up as Jiru pulled him upright. Tugging at their shirts, they stripped each other topless again as the encore of their heated love commenced. Laying Jiru down on her back, Izuku's lips traveled further down her torso, eventually stopping only an inch or two above her short pants. Moving past them, he felt up her calf and thigh, hooking one of them on his shoulder and planting kisses along the way, even the back of her knee and continuing to her violet-painted toes. He worked his way back up again, the tip of his tongue now swirling around her navel. A moan and a gasp escaped Jiru's lips as she arched her back and suddenly felt her short pants being pulled off from around her waist, and Izuku's fingers gently rubbing against her through her polka-dotted purple lingerie. She tried to cover her mouth but her hand was caught and pinned above her head as he continued to steadily and mercilessly push her up to another orgasm. Propriety, shame and other such things were once again thrown to the wind as Jiru's husky moans riled him up, intensifying the movement of his fingers. He didn't stop, her voice only egging his lust further, even when she finally climaxed. Embracing him with an incredible amount of force, Jiru bit down on his shoulder, hard, in an effort to stifle her voice. En no fair, she rasped. Izuku responded by nipping her ear and licking one of her earphone jacks which suddenly sent erratic streams of tingly vibrations down his tongue. He also felt Jiru's knee softly grinding against his painfully hard erection. Kyo ah, ha, oh, Christ. It's time for payback. Lie down, she said smugly, already planning her revenge on him. Pulling Izuku's pants off with just as much aggression, she revealed a pair of green and navy plaid boxes with a rather large bulge pitching a tent in the middle. Her fingers gently stroked the top of the tent through the fabric, making it twitch and throb. You like that? Yeehees. Izuku squirmed but made no attempt to escape as he let his girlfriend do as she pleased. Even the bleeding bite mark on his shoulder was throbbing with a dull ecstasy. Blood was pounding in his temple but he wanted more. And she eagerly gave it to him, quickening the pace of her stroking, clearly enjoying his reaction. Good, cause now it's my turn to make you scream. Pulling his boxes down slightly lower but not completely off, Jiru revealed his cock, throbbing, begging for release. While it was grotesque, she did find it oddly cute. With the tip of her tongue, she slowly began lapping the tip up, making Izuku convulse and gasp more like a taser was hitting him. Within minutes, he felt an indescribable warmth surround the head, extending downwards. Her tongue snaking around the shaft made him thrust his hip upwards instinctively, drawing in a sharp breath. He heard her chuckle and could tell that she was having fun, thoroughly toying with him. Izuku kept touching her even after Jiru orgasmed, but she was doing the opposite to him, only giving him what he wanted in sporadic bursts, sometimes lasting 5 minutes, 10, or even 30 seconds if she felt like it. While Izuku did his best to control himself, his abs and pubokoki gill muscles were starting to cramp fiercely. Kuka, P please, dot you need to, ooh, dot R, oh my god, R, his hand found Jiru's head as he guided her back and forth. She sucked her cheeks in to increase the pressure and rewarded him with his long-awaited orgasm. Fierce spurts of hot, sticky semen splashed inside her mouth and down her throat as Izuku drew her head deeper towards his groin. Once she was convinced his orgasm subsided, Jiru pulled away. Eewww, it tasted weird. She commented as she wiped her lips and reached for the bottle of water on the floor to wash the taste away. Um, sorry. I uh, are you okay? Jiru only kissed him as a reply as they lay down in the comfort of their skin. Yeah, 
I'm soaring on fucking cloud nine right now, thanks to you. Great. My turn now. Grabbing Jiru by her legs, Izuku hooked them onto his shoulders, her sopping wet crotch mere inches away from his face. Wah ah. Hey. No. Wait stop. Seriously? Come oh ah. Despite her pleas, Izuku kept going, his tongue, lips and teeth ravishing her from the inside out, making her toes curl so much that her legs were cramping. But she didn't care at the moment. All that mattered to Jiru was everything Izuku was doing to her. For her. More. Do it more. Keep going. Keep going. Yes. Right there. Right. H-N-N-N-N-G-H. Ah. F-U-U-U-C-K. Waves of orgasms continued to assault her one after another like body blows, numbing her mind until the coup de grace completely knocked her consciousness out of her body. With all his energy spent, Izuku fell beside her as his eyes grew droopy. Gently bringing her closer to himself, he closed his eyes, both heart and mind at peace for what was probably the first time in the truest sense in over a decade. I love you, Kyoka. And with one last kiss for the night, he drifted off to sleep. That will be all for this video, be sure to like, subscribe, share, and comment down below for more videos, goodbye.